up the game of Teach You for four players, first, partners will be established. Players should sit around the playing area so that partners are sitting diagonally from each other. Next, choose a player to shuffle the cards. After shuffling, they will offer the deck of cards to the player to their left. This player may cut the deck by splitting it roughly in half and placing the top half of the cards on the bottom of the deck. After shuffling the deck and cutting it, place the deck face down in the middle of the playing area. Now, the dealer will take the top card of the deck and place it in their hand. Each other player in counterclockwise order will also take the top card into their hand. This will continue with players going around in counterclockwise order, taking one card into their hand, until the entire deck is gone. When the deck runs out, all players should have 14 cards in their hand. All players must keep their hand cards secret from all other players and may not share what they have with their partner. This setup is described in the traditional Chinese way. Players may change the setup to simply deal each player 14 cards instead. After all players in the game have gained their 14 cards, each player will now look at their cards and choose one card to push to each other player in the game. To push a card, they will remove it from their hand and place it face down in front of another player. Most likely, they will push cards they don't want to their two opponents and a more desirable card to their partner. They, however, may not ask their partner anything to hint at what cards they should pass. After each player has pushed one card to each other player in the game, each player will have three cards face down in front of them. They will take all three of these cards and add them to their hand. There is one special thing a player can call out during setup while they are gaining their cards. Before a player gains their ninth hand card, they may call out Grand Tichu. This is a very risky move and is basically a player betting on the fact that they will run out of cards before all other players, including their partner. This is risky because they are making a prediction before they actually know all of the cards they have to work with during the round. Calling out Grand Tichu during setup for the round will either gain the player's team 200 points or lose them 200 points at the end of the round. After setting up the game, players are ready to start the game. The game of Teach You for four players is a partner game that plays out over several rounds. Players are playing in pairs with partners sitting diagonal from each other. The object of the game is to be the first team to 1,000 points, so partners must work together to help each other score while also working to prevent the other team from scoring. The player holding the Mahjong card in their hand will always start the round. They have several options for the card or cards they will play, and do not have to play the Mahjong. Let's take a look at their play options. Their first option is to play a single card, such as a two. Their second option is to play a pair of cards, such as two jacks or two fives. Their third option is to play a set of pairs. When using this option, they must play pairs in numerical order, such as two nines and two tens, or two jacks, two queens, and two kings. Option four is to play a trio of cards of matching value, such as three eights or three queens. Their fifth option is to play a full house. A full house is a trio of matching cards plus a pair of matching cards. Cards played in a full house do not have to be in numerical order. The final option they have is to play a run of five or more cards. The run must be in sequential order, such as this or this. It should be noted that while playing runs, ace is always a high value. After the start player plays their cards, the player to their right will take their turn. In Chinese games, play moves to the right. If players are more comfortable, they can play to the left. The next player may choose to either pass or play. If they pass, play will continue to move to the right. If they play, they must play using the same option the start player used, but the item they play must be of a higher value. For example, let's say that a start player played this run of five cards. The next player would have to play a higher valued run of exactly five cards. So a run like this, starting at nine, would be of a higher value than this run that started at six. If a player had played three eighths, that could be beaten by exactly three tens. While beating a player that has played a full house, the next player will have to play a higher set of three in their full house. For example, this set of three nines and two twos would beat the previous set. The play will continue in this way with the player to the right either playing a higher valued option than the previous player or passing. The player who played the last combination of cards takes the entire trick. 
by placing all of the cards from the turn into their player area. The player who took the trick by winning the previous combination will start by leading a new combination of cards. Play will continue as normal with the player to the right either playing a higher combination or passing. If the player who took the trick has no cards in their hand while starting the next combination, they have gone out, and the player to their right will start the trick. There is a special risky thing that a player can call out before they play their first card from their hand during a round. This is a slightly less risky version of the Grand Tichu. Any player that is confident in their hand may call out Small Tichu to gamble that they are going to run out of cards first in the round. If they do go out first, they will gain their team 100 points. The risk is that if they fail to go out first, they will lose their team 100 points. The player who called Small Tichu must go out first, so even if their partner goes out first, their team will still lose 100 points. As mentioned, Small Tichu may only be called out before a player plays their first cards from their hand. So if a player plays cards, they may no longer call Small Tichu. There are several special cards in the game that make the deck different than a typical deck of cards. These cards can help players throughout the game. Let's take a look at each of these cards. The Mahjong card is the first type of special card. This is the card that was mentioned earlier, because a player that has this in their hand at the beginning of the round will be the start player for that round. When a player actually plays the Mahjong card, it will be played as a value 1 card, so it could be used in a run such as this or it could simply be played as a single card. The other special ability this card gives a player who played it is that that player may make a wish for a card. While wishing for a card, a player will name any card from value 2 to ace. They may not name a special card. By naming a card, they are forcing a player to play if they have it. The card wished for must only be played if it can be legally played using the normal rules of the game. For example, let's say a player played a Mahjong card in a run of five, such as this, and wished for an ace. The next player in turn order does have an ace in their hand, but because they don't have a run of five cards to play the ace in, they do not have to play it, and could pass. If the trick is claimed, and no player has played the card that was wished for, the wish remains in effect until a player can fulfill it, so the next player that can legally play the ace will be forced to. The Hound is another type of special card. This is simply a strategic card that is played at the beginning of a player's turn, when they are the leader. After playing this card, the leader position is passed to that player's partner, so their partner will play the first card or cards for that turn. If you play a hound and your partner is already out of cards, the lead passes to your partner's right. The hound can be a great card for a player to save until their last card. That way they may pass the lead to their partner in hopes that their partner can go out second. The Phoenix is another very powerful card in the game. There are two possible uses of the Phoenix. The first use is as a Joker. While it is a Joker, it can take the place of any normal card in a combination, such as in this run, where it is used in place of a 6, or here, where it is used as a third 9 in a full house. The other possible use of a Phoenix is as a single card. The Phoenix will always be a half step up from the previous card, so this Phoenix card would count as 9.5 and could be beaten by a 10 or higher. In this way, a phoenix can also be used to beat an ace. However, a phoenix may not be used to beat a dragon. Dragons will be explained next. Despite its power during the game, at the end of the round, it is worth minus 25 points for the team that holds it in their scoring pile. The dragon is another powerful card during the game, and also scores a player 25 points for their team at the end of the round. The dragon may only be played as a single card, the dragon is always the highest valued card, beating both the ace and a phoenix played above the ace. The dragon, however, may be defeated by a bomb. Bombs will be described next. If a player who played the dragon wins a trick, they will not gain the cards for that trick into their player area. Instead, they give the trick, including the dragon worth 25 points, to one of their opponents. They may choose which of their opponents to give it to, the final special option to mention is not a card, but rather a sequence of cards that may be played at any time to beat anything and take the entire trick. Therefore, a player may play a bomb even when it is not their turn. They may even bomb the card they themselves played. There are two different types of bombs in the game. Let's take a look at each of these bombs. 
The first type of bomb is a bomb made up of all four cards of the same rank. For example, four tens. The second type of bomb is a sequence bomb. This type of bomb is a sequence of at least five consecutive cards in the same suit. Whenever you have this type of sequence, it is always considered a bomb. Therefore, you could not play a sequence of five or more cards in the same suit as a normal run of cards. It will always be considered a bomb. After one player plays a bomb, all other players may play any bombs they have in their hand to try to beat the other player's bomb. When playing bombs, a higher valued bomb will always beat a lower valued bomb. And having a bomb with more cards will always beat a bomb with less cards. So this run of five cards would beat this set of four queens. This higher valued bomb of five cards would beat this lower valued bomb of five cards. And even though this bomb of five cards is of higher value than this bomb, the bomb of six cards will beat it. Bombs can be used on most cards and are a very valuable part of the game. The one card they may not be used on is the hound. A round of Tichu ends immediately when only one player has cards left in their hand. That player will hand over all of the remaining cards to their opponents. And they will hand any tricks that they won during the round to the player who ran out of cards first. After doing this, the round is scored. Each player will score points for the cards they gain during the round. They will score 10 points for each king they have and 10 points for each 10 they have. Five points will be scored for each five they have. The player holding the dragon will score 25 points and the player holding the phoenix will lose 25 points. After each player scores their points, they will combine their points with their team member to get their team score. It is typically easy to tell if scoring was done correctly, because during each round, the points scored by both teams combined should equal 100. The only time this doesn't work is if special scoring was used. If any player called small teach you, they will either gain their team 100 points or lose them 100 points. As a reminder, Small Tichu is called by any player before they play their first card. If the player who called Small Tichu does run out of cards first in that round, they will score 100 points for the team. If they didn't, they lose 100 points. Grand Tichu is another thing called out by players. This is called during the setup of the round. If they call Grand Tichu before they take their ninth card into their hand, if they do go out first, they score 200 points for their team. If they don't, they lose their team 200 points. Finally, there is one more special case in the game where players do a different scoring. If two players on one team go out by running out of hand cards in first and second place, the round ends immediately. The team that went out first and second scores 200 points, and the other team does not score any points for that round. The game ends when any team reaches or exceeds 1,000 points at the end of a round. That team is the winner. If both teams reach over 1,000, but are tied, they will continue playing rounds until a clear winner is established at the end of the round.